suggest Let's take you live now to a news conference with the Transport Minister and the Energy Minister. ...practical suggestions, and they are a limited number of four-wheel drives, such as the Toyota Land Cruiser, great vehicle, Ford Everest, also a great vehicle regarded as a workhorse four-wheel drives, will move from the passenger car into the light commercial category. We're smoothing the emissions trajectory for light commercial vehicles. The new vehicle efficiency standard targets for passenger vehicles catch up to comparable economies by the end of the decade. We're adjusting what is known as the break point, recognising heavy, heavier vehicles emit more. It also means that EVs, which are heavier due to their battery than their petrol or diesel counterparts, can also earn more credits. The standard itself will begin on the 1st of January 2025, but the credits and penalties system won't start until the 1st of July next year, uh, and that is to help my department uh, with the implementation. Can I thank very much the industry for the collaborative and cooperative way in which they've worked for us? Uh, we know that working together we get better policy outcomes, and that is what this has been about. Uh, when we launched the impact analysis, which is part of the regulatory process, we said we would consult, and consult we have, and what you see as a result today uh, is a result of that consultation. Uh, this is a policy that has been around for a quarter of a century. Uh, 2001, the then Prime Minister, John Howard, uh, said that they were negotiating a fuel efficiency standard. While the coalition has backed away, failed to get it done, Labor is actually delivering a fuel efficiency standard for this country. The coalition, we know, will just resort to scare campaigns, but we take a very different approach. We've worked a long, a long time to get this to here. This is a long-needed change for the Australian market. It is an efficiency standard that is right for Australia, and we certainly, as we introduce and start to go now through the parliamentary processes, urge all other political parties to get on board. Minister Bowen. Thanks so much, Catherine. And can I also thank you for your leadership and the very close way we've worked together over recent months to make this policy a reality. This policy is sensible, but long overdue. Been promised by governments for decades, uh, but this government will be the government that delivers it. And as Catherine said, we are joined today by a broad cross-section of the motoring industry. And just as a broad cross-section of the motoring industry has engaged with us, it's now time ideally for a broad cross-section of the parliament to pass this legislation. This legislation will mean Australian motorists are no longer at the back of the queue, no longer treated as second-hand citizens, second-class citizens, uh, but are given the same rights as those motorists and consumers in 85 per cent of the world's car markets. And no longer will Australia be in the G2 of Australia and Russia as the only two major economies without vehicle efficiency standards. Now, as Catherine said, we announced our preferred model in February. We said we'd consult with parties of good faith on implementation details, on finer details. We said we'd take on board sensible good faith suggestions, and that's exactly what we've done. Not everybody here has got everything they've asked for. Uh, some people wanted us to go harder and faster. Uh, some have concerns, had concerns uh, and wanted us to slow. But everybody here today has had a say. Everybody today has had genuine concerns taken on board, and everyone today recognises that Australia can now move on implement these standards and Australian motorists can get access to these standards. In addition to the changes Catherine uh, announced uh, in my portfolio, I'm also announcing $60 million of support for Australian car dealers on charging. We recognise not just in terms of Australian car dealers making a very big transition to EVs and hybrids, having charges available to charge the cars in their stock, but also being able to provide a charging option for uh, their co customers going forward after purchase is a good thing. And that $60 million will be available in a competitive process and, of course, will encourage and have waiting towards those dealers that make the charging uh, available to consumers and motorists more broadly. But it's great to be joined by this broad cross-section of the motoring industry, to be joined by Tesla and Toyota. Uh, it reminds me of when the Prime Minister and I notified the UNFCCC of our 43 per cent emissions reduction target with the Business Council of Australia and the ACTU behind us, with um, um, the cons conservation movement behind us, as well as industry groups. We've tried to bring groups together, and that's what we've done today. 